Ladies and gentlemen, Marion Blair here. Today we're going to be changing the coolant on this 2014 Ram 2500 with the Cummins engine. The procedure is the same though for all the, at least the fourth generation, probably the newer ones too, uh, regardless. There's a plug down here, and I'm going to show it to you in a minute, on the side of the radiator. And you got to back that thing off until you start getting the fluid out, just like a normal pet cog, but for whatever reason, Ram decided to put it in the hardest place to access they could instead of putting it on the bottom of the radiator somewhere it's like most radiators have. But there's three ways you can get to this thing. You can pull the, the grill off, which is not that bad. It's just four bolts, I think. And uh, you can pull it off and then, then there's a little, a little flapper there that you can pull out of your way and you can get to it easily that way. Or you can pull the uh, liner out of the this driver's side wheel well liner which is easier to do also I think I'd probably opt for that or you can do what I'm gonna do is remove this one bolt off of your uh, hydraulic reservoir for your power steering and then you can just pick it up and move it out of the way I'm not gonna disconnect it or do anything like that uh, there's rubber hose, there's, there's plenty of room there. Well, I say plenty of room, there's not plenty of room. But for my old skinny, shaky hands, I think I can get down in there and open that thing and, uh, and close it. And then, you know, we'll see how that works out. But uh, I think I can do it. It's going to take a 10 millimeter uh, Allen wrench. The shorter, the smaller, the better, because you don't have much room to work down in there. And it looks like you can go over it with a socket, but you can't. And I'm going to try to film that for you in a second and show you what I'm talking about. Uh, it, it won't. There's ridges on the damn plug for whatever reason. I don't. I don't understand that either. But the way you the way you back it off is with an Allen wrench from the middle of it. You can't see that from up here. You just have to know that, so I'm telling you that. But anyway, let's go ahead and uh, take a look, and I'll show you where this thing's at. And let me see if I can point to it just to make sure that you see it. I'm going to run this piece of 3 8 inch galvanized pipe down there. You see right there where I'm pointing at? That's it right there. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but you see that little ridge on the top of that, would, which would ordinarily be a, a nut, uh, a bolt. It's not, you can't put a wrench on this, so give up on that. It's 10 millimeter in the center of it, and you can't see it, you just have to take my word for it. Now I'm hand, I'm hand holding this with my old shaky hands, but just to give you a perspective, that's the one nut right here that you have to take out and then you just get this thing over like that and then you get your arm down in there with a 10 millimeter allen wrench and it's tough uh, but that's what we're going to do uh, if it really gets to where it's because it, it, it tends to tear up your arm unless you got girly skinny arms like I have and it still tears them up and what it is these sharp edges right here that just eat your lunch really basically so put some padding on or something if you can but it won't do you any good to remove this bolt it won't do you any good to remove this uh, windshield wiper reservoir it's not going to help you it's not going anywhere because it's all part of an integral part of this uh, battery box and they, they really made it tough but nonetheless, it's just a matter of getting to it. And by the way, we're going to be using this uh, coolant here, the Mopar. I'm going back with exactly what uh, Mopar, what it came with. Uh, you want to be damn sure that you don't put the wrong stuff in here. You need to put this stuff that's compatible because you're going to leave some coolant behind. And unless you want to be flushing, and that, it can actually cause some pretty bad problems if you mix this stuff with regular press stone or something. 
There is some aftermarket uh, alternatives though. I'm, I'm not saying you need to use Mopar, but just make sure that you've got the proper one for this particular uh, engine, which uses the uh, Hotz, Oats, whatever it's called. There's a close-up shot of the coolant bottle. And theoretically, you should be able to take, uh, I think it's 5.6 gallons, but I doubt that we're gonna get that much in there, but I'm just gonna put whatever it'll, it'll take. This is a pretty complex uh, cooling system. I mean, you've got, coo you've got coolant lines running everywhere. You've got them uh, you know, going to your turbo, and it's just a, a, a lot of stuff. You've got the uh, EGR cooler, which is the thing you want to make sure when you finish that you get uh, you don't run this thing low on fluid and that you get it you know burped out pretty good so that you don't that's the danger is screwing up that EGR cooler so, now there's a tool that you can uh, buy that works really well but I don't have one and I'm gonna try to do this without it I think I can but um, the tool well, let me show you up here where it, how it works. You take your cap off here, and then it would fit inside. And you take your, your shop air hose and run it in one side, and then the other side would just be open to a bucket or something. Now this is after you've drained it. And, and what that's for is just to evacuate the air from the system. And it's a handy thing to have, but I just don't have one. But that'll pull all the air out of it. And then there's another valve that you open up and then you can suck your coolant out of, the, out of your uh, jug or whatever you've got it mixed in. So I just wanted to mention that if you've got one of those tools or if you know somebody that's got one, you got access to it, definitely use it. But uh, this will work too, the way we're going to do it. So let's go ahead and move on. Get that out of the way. There's just one bolt and we can pick it up and move it like that. And we're going to fight this thing down here. I've got actually three options. I've got this longer, it's a 10 millimeter, it's actually the right size. Now this looks like uh, kind of a Harbor Freight 10 millimeter or something. It's not quite as big, but if it's snug enough and it feels good, I'm going to use it because I need all the, the room I can get like that. I've also got a socket that's very short, but with the ratchet on it, you end up with something about like this. So let's see if we can get this thing draining. The truck needs to be warmed up, hot, all that stuff. Just make sure you got your Allen wrench all the way in because you don't want to strip that thing and then have to worry about replacing that. I think I've got it. Yeah. So I've got it loose. Okay, can you hear that? I didn't move it much and we got pretty good flow. It didn't take but maybe half a round, quarter of a round maybe. I've got this extra jacket on which really helps protect your arm because your arm catches hell down there. This was not bad at all, not as bad as I thought it would be as far as getting down there to that, that plug. All right guys, so here's what we got out of it. I know it looks dirty, but the bucket was dirty. A couple of notes about it. Uh, I warmed up the engine and transmission up to full temperature. I think you probably want to do that. One thing good to note is that that coolant stains this plastic bottle, this reservoir. It's empty right now, but you can see it looks like it's got a level in it. So you really, when you're checking it, you really need to pull the cap off and look inside. Use the smallest Allen wrench you can, like I said. You'll be happy you did. 
Now socket's not going to work well in here. It usually is better, but it's not in this case. At least for me. Wiggle it around good before you start twisting on it because it's not all the way in, as has been my experience. You'll feel it when it goes in. It goes in at least a good quarter of an inch, maybe more. There's just not much room to work back and forth, but very doable without pulling the fender or any of that other stuff. If an old man like me can do it, anybody can, right? Don't want to get too carried away with that thing, and I believe I'm okay. So, we're going to leave it like that, call it good. We'll check for leaks later, but I, I think we got it pretty, pretty tight there. It's plastic, you know. No need to worry about torquing that. That ain't going nowhere. Okay, so that's done. We're going to add coolant now. Yeah, I know that's a little bitty funnel. I may have to go and get a better one than that. I'm not liking what I'm seeing here. But look at the old man. Poured it perfectly. That's 50-50. Same stuff I showed you all ago. Them old shaky hands. This is probably the most critical part, and I don't mean by the way you do it, you just fill it up, right? But uh, what I mean is we want to make sure that we don't let this engine run low because uh, there's going to be a lot of air in here. All right, stabbed it again with my old shaky hands. This is probably better done when you got a lot of time, you know, to ride around, check it, all that kind of stuff. And you're going to want to check this every day for probably a week just to make sure. Now the dealer told me, well, we just dumped two gallons in it, but that's not 50-50 according to what I come up with. I've been saving these jugs pretty much for this purpose. I measured all of this with a with a measuring cup. I'm anal about getting it 50-50 and all that crap. Okay, now she's starting to I'm starting to see some Yeah, and so this way, this way it's going to get fun, right? But that's what we like. Make it more interesting. We're just going to let it set and kind of see what it does. You can see it slowly dropping. And uh, I'm, what, three and a half gallons in right now. So we've got a good bit more to go but we're not in a hurry. Now if we had that tool, I'd just be opening up the, the vacuum and it'd suck it right in. All your hoses would be collapsed, which I'm not crazy about that idea, but... Okay, I'm pressing the return hose right now just to see how that affects things. It looks like it makes it go down. That's on my Y pipe that I changed here the last this summer. It's going to be a lot of air in this thing, though. You can count on that. Lots of air. Okay, see, I've got it pretty much all the way up to the neck, right? Now, and it will just sit there. It won't do anything. It's air locked. So, but look what happens when I press the return hose to the big radiator on this truck. Just to the radiator on any truck. The water, the hot water comes in the top and the cool water goes out the bottom. But you can see just doing that really pushes a lot of air bubbles out. 
which is good. Because we're getting most of it in there without uh, even cranking the truck yet, which I like. I like a lot. So that's the fourth gallon right there. I'm just squeezing that hose. Taking my time. I've got the rest of my life to do this. So I'll keep doing this like this and, and then we'll get back when we're ready to crank it. Well, we're still climbing. 194. We should see that thermostat open here shortly. Oh, that looks like it just opened. Yeah, we got a pretty good drop there. Yeah, we had a pretty good drop in the level there. So I think the thermostat's open now. So I'm gonna idle her back down now. And go see if we can uh, add some more fluid. So I'm just working the air out of it now. We'll run it back up there to 1500. That's the maximum RPM. Heat is definitely working, I can tell you that. Ambient temperature outside right now is 57 degrees. I'm gonna cut this heater back a little bit. So that, that looks like it worked out pretty well. Guys, I'm not gonna hold you any longer. The, uh, I know I've got some more to put in, but I think I'm to the point now, I'm close enough, I'm within, oh geez, less than a half gallon probably. So I think I'm at the point where I can probably run it a little bit and then, you know, check it and that sort of thing. It's, it's come up, uh, it's working out really nice actually. Better than I thought with all these different paths for that coolant to travel. I've changed coolant on, God, I can't count the number of times on these trucks and stuff, but never on one that had so much emissions equipment, to be honest. And so I was kind of curious about this EGR cooler and whether that was gonna be a problem. But I'm pretty pleased with what, what I'm seeing. And the technique that uh, we used of just kind of squeezing the return hose and just being patient with that, I think that pays off. And then bring the truck up to temperature and uh, you know, see how she goes. But don't open that, that cap, uh, whatever you do while it's running. And uh, it's best to do it when it's cool. So I appreciate you guys watching my video. And until next time, adios.